Oh yeah, g'day mate, and welcome back to another Fido Daily. Today we'll be taking a look at a Cassiopeia game and a bit of a new build that I've just discovered to be super effective in Season 14 because the thing that drew me the most to Cassiopeia many years ago before I decided to main it uh, was the fact that you could just run at your laner, level 2, level 3, kill them, um, and feel really good about it. But in Season 14, it's very hard to do that with a standard sort of Conqueror tier page. So I'll be showing you throughout this video how this setup can help you get those solo kills like the good old times. Now before we jump into the video, I just want to quickly share a technique that took me hundreds of hours to actually understand properly and master that you can add to your repertoire in just 30 seconds. So the biggest mistake a Cassio player can make when alt flashing is pressing the keys too quickly. Okay, so when you press alt flash like this, there's a delay between when your flash finishes and your ulti goes off and it gives them time to sidestep it as soon as they can see your flash animation and you'll find yourself missing a lot more ult. So what you want to actually do is press your R first and then flash once you see the little bar at the bottom of your screen go full blue okay alt and then flash once it goes to the full blue right at the end because then your ultimate will go off instantly and it'll be impossible to dodge for the enemy now the reason why Cassio feels a little bit harder to play this season than before is uh, because they buffed all the Doran's uh, the Doran's items right and uh, you're very used to starting tier on Cassio but right now tier is just such a garbage starting item it gives you no health okay so if somebody goes flat HP rune with Doran's ring and you start tier with a scaling HP rune you're basically down 200 100 HP level 1. It is absolutely insane um, how weak you are in the laning phase and you really can't fulfill Cassiopeia's identity of, you know, I land my Q level 2, I run you down with fangs. That's what she's always been about. So you really have to adapt in the season. And I think taking Sorcery Primary is a really good way uh, to sort of manage that, manage all the Doran's buffs, because you get access to Scorch, you get access to Mana Flow, uh, which means that you can start for the Doran's Ring because you have that excess mana. And then your secondary page, you can go for Resolve. Uh, if you feel like it's a hard lane, if you feel like, you know, you need the second win value, just grab Resolve, grab Overgrowth, great scaling. Otherwise, you could also take Inspiration uh, with Biscuits for even more mana in lane. Uh, maybe a Time Warp Tonic or a Cosmic Insight, both are fine. Um, alternatively, you can even go uh, Precision Secondary. You could take um, Presence of Mind with Coupe de Gras, or you could take Tenacity Rune, Legend Tenacity if you really need it. But most important thing is make sure you have Scorch, make sure you have Mana Flow, because Cassio got a, a big buff on her auto attacks, right? And uh, you can actually start Q. In a lot of ranged matchups, you can absolutely start Q and just use your autos to last hit the wave. That was not the case in Season 13. Season 13, if you don't start your E, you're basically just uh, going to miss half the wave half the time. So... Uh, you know, in this game, we took E start against Ari just because she has a move speed ability level 1. I think that uh, it's a little bit unreliable. You know, maybe if I'm Faker, I can land every Q on, on Ari with the move speed, but uh, it's just so much easier to proc your Scorch, to proc your Mana Flow with just a single Fang and walk away. And uh, we do have control of the lane at the moment. Uh, she has given us push. We hit our level 2. We walk up just in time and get a nice trade. You know, not overcomplicating the game, guys. I see so many Cassios trying to force the trades level 1. Don't. Conserve your mana, all right? Wait for your level 2, for your level up. Wait till you have your Empowered Fangs. Because your mana pool is not that big starting Doran's Ring. You have great all-in, great AP damage. Um... But yeah, just under tower, again, just feel free to just go for the sort of the QE. Uh, don't spam too many fangs, you know. Remember that you got to wait for your mana flow to be up, because if your mana flow is up and your scorch is up, that's an extra, you know, uh, 20 damage. Plus, you obviously get the uh, half refund on your Q, because it costs 50, you get back 25 for the mana flow stacks. Fantastic. So the most important thing with this page is that you use your mana flow off cooldown. As much as you can, wait for the enemy to walk up. Wait until one of your creeps is low and uh, try and get a mana flow proc um, every single time. Now here I see that my jungle is invading, so I'm just moving before Ari is. I see that I have a little bit of a timer. I check my wave to make sure it's not gonna crash. I just contribute, force the trundle flash. Now if my master Yi instantly flashed there, he would have been able to kill the trundle. We're just trying to blind dodge the charm. I uh, weren't able to do so, unfortunately. We take a little bit of damage, make sure that we get our mana flow stack, and don't over chase, right? This is really important, you know, don't drop creeps, just to get a little bit of extra damage on the enemy. It's already done, okay? Your job in the early game with this build is, yes, if you can all in him, absolutely do that. Uh, but if you can't, then it's just mana flow. Mana flow gaming all the way. And you can see there, I was actually able to get the cannon under the tower because of the buffs to Cassiopeia's attack speed, uh, the uh, attack animation, rather, this season. And... Uh, you actually do feel pretty comfortable, even if you're low on mana, you do feel pretty comfortable last hitting on this champion now. And uh, every single time, mana flows up, you throw out that Q. Mana flows up, you throw out that Q, hits the Scorch. It's just very, very nice. 
Now at this point, I'm trying to trade more health because I see that I have a HP pot and she doesn't. So any trades are sort of good for me. And uh, I really don't want my master to gank this lane. He flashes in. Uh, not sure what's going on here. This is a bit of a bronze, some bronze gameplay, but I promise you this is not a bronze game. And uh, you, look, it's easy to get tilted if your lane gets uh, gets fed like this. But at the end of the day, um, I'm still winning. Uh, what's what's important is that you don't panic. You know, if that happens, don't panic. Yeah, I was slow pushing my wave. I'm still going to slow push my wave. I'm not going to change. Uh, you know what I'm doing. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try and compensate. Try and flash in an Ari and get the kill. It's all good. He made a mistake, and we just keep playing. Keep playing our game. Right. Our job is to recall. Refresh our resources and try again. So we get the shove in. Uh, we made sure to conserve our mana until we uh, until we were absolutely sure we could crash the wave. The enemy support tries to walk mid. Instead of pulling the wave, he tries to cancel our recall, which is unsuccessful. And uh, we were able to get the crash in and get our base off. Obviously going to TP back to make sure we don't lose too many creeps. Now here we could go Glowing Moat. I feel like Glowing Moat is a really bad item in terms of gold efficiency. So I just went for the pink ward there. Um, just because I know it is 5 minutes, both objectives are up. So the value of the pink ward is very high. And uh, we're just kind of running this guy down here a little bit. Um, we know that he has no flash from the previous play. Oh, almost got cock blocked by the minions and uh, died to the tower, but not quite. So that was good. You know, we didn't try to compensate when the E came. We just bided our time, got our items. Now after you get a solo kill like that, make sure you do guys instantly shove the wave and uh, you know get a reset off, uh, get your regen, spend your money. There's no use you being around on the map even if you have blue buff or even if my HP was slightly higher here. Um, as soon as you get a solo kill, just make sure you always base. And here we're thinking about what we can buy. It should just be a lost chapter. Uh, we grab that. We should always have prior in lane. That's the great thing about this build on Cassio is that with D-Ring tier lost chapter, you can actually just spam your fangs on the wave and not go out of mana. Um, compared to the Rod of Ages build, where if you know if we had Rod of Ages here, we'd have a blasting wand, mana crystal, ruby crystal tier. We would have zero AP, or we would have less AP rather, and we have far less mana, and uh, most importantly, no cooldown reduction. So. Um, that's why I like this build. It gives you a, a much faster spike um, and also helps you avoid ganks. I think normally without phase rush it is really really difficult to survive if you do get ganked. You know the Conqueror doesn't give you any escape value. And we got a pink ward. Make sure that when you guys walk to lane you always want to try and ward when the wave hasn't met. Okay so while the creeps are still walking is the best time to ward because you will lose nothing right. You, you won't lose prior, you won't lose a minion and you just chuck that pink ward. If you've ever got a pink ward just chuck it exactly where I placed it you know. Um, maybe slightly to the slightly higher but just anywhere in that bush is fine. Uh, place the pink ward in the close bush right. Place your pink wards here and then actually place your green wards, uh, your yellow wards rather on, you know, on raptors or a little bit deeper in the enemy jungle because the whole point of placing a pink ward is you want to be able to defend it. So don't go out and place your pink ward in, in the, uh, you know, in the enemy red buff bush and then the enemy jungler walks through it and just clears it and now you have no wards. Okay, so always think about uh, your ward positioning and am I actually going to be able to defend it? Um, and at this point we have blue buffs so we want to just keep spamming our abilities. Uh, we, we're winning the mana war at the moment. One thing that she has over us is regen, right? She has a refillable and we don't. So we don't want to get too low. We want to stay above sort of three quarters HP um, so that we can always have all in threat on her. Whereas if we trade down to, you know, half HP, half HP, she'll regen back up and we'll sort of be left wanting. Um, and because I had blue buff there, like I told you, I'm just going to be spam pushing the wave. Looking for things to do with my move. I've pushed my wave. You can see I'm not trying to harass around the tower or do anything like that. Whenever you have no flash on Cassio, always try and use your move. Use your turn, your free time after killing a wave um, to not try and harass him on the tower because you are very vulnerable to a gank. Now here we've got the, the double pincer from both sides. You can do this if you see that your jungle is on the bot side of the map and you are slightly on the opposite side. You can come from two angles and uh, if you if, you know if your laner sees your jungler first they'll run towards you. If they see you first then they'll run towards your jungler and it sets up for a very very easy kill. So that's a really really good way no matter which champion you're playing to sort of um, gank your laner I guess. You, you know you fog after pushing the wave. They think that you might have based. They want to grab the next wave uh, and you just come out of nowhere and get them. So. I'm not really sure what's going on here, the, this seems to be the, the enemy bot lane is mid and they are losing bot plates and they're getting a little bit tilted because uh, I do want to get this cannon but the enemy uh, Zaya was uh, chatting me there and as soon as you're done with this wave you know uh, make sure that this guy can't freeze your waves, really common thing uh, you know just try to at least contest him on the wave a little bit or make him pay some HP you know if I didn't use any abilities, if I just didn't walk with my wave at all, if I walked away uh, then the Janna would have just pulled it into the bush and it would have been a very bad freeze but because we kind of 
uh, made her pay for it. She wasn't able to freeze it as well, and she was also late to the bot play, so we have just won the game by, you know, doing a little bit of damage to Janna. That was very nice. And also remember that if you need to base, uh, don't get baited by plays like that. You know, our teammates are doing something bot lane. We don't care about it. It's our base time. We have our item. We've pushed a wave. You know, we can get a good reset off without missing any creeps or even just missing one. That's perfect for us. So don't get baited by your teammates doing stuff. Just look at your gold. Do I have over a thousand gold? Am I missing regen? Am I missing HP? If all of those are true, then no matter what's going on, even if your teammates are hitting Dragon or, or a Rift Herald or anything like that, you take your base. You do what's best for your game because if you don't, it's going to bite you later on. You know, you're going to lose a turn. Your opponent's going to get a roam off because you have to take a bad base. You're going to go down a level, lose CS. It's just not worth it. Play for yourself, guys. This is how you win so you can now here our our master Yi is on rift but we have no wards so when you have no wards like this you got to make sure again play for yourself i'm ready to help master Yi. i'm not letting my ari walk in for free but in case there's more people that i'm expecting i'm not putting myself in a vulnerable position you know i am giving myself a way out i'm always ready to leave back to my tower in case things go wrong, okay? And that's really, really important. You wanna to walk to the objective, you wanna contribute without putting yourself at risk. Um, and you can see that, you know, we we're able to clean up a kill, go one for one, we lose the objective, but uh, it's very, very good for our game. Whenever your, you know, your mid laner dies and uh, for the cost of your jungler, you're always gonna push that next mid wave and you're always gonna grab a, a nice little CS lead and a plate as well for yourself, so. Uh, that's really, really important. Early game skirmishes around Dragons, around Rift Herald, it's all about staying alive. If you stay alive, then no matter how many kills, if it's 2 for 1, or 1 for 0, or 3 for 2, whatever the kill count is, you always get an extra kill mid by just pushing the plate, pushing the wave. Now there, um, I knew that Ari had teleport, so if I stay for that plate, uh, we will get the plate, of course, but she might be able to cancel our recall. And if she does cancel our recall, then we're going to lose a full wave, pretty much, for you know taking a bad recall, or she's going to be able to roam, and we won't be able to help our team. So we potentially, you know, open our team up uh, to get ganked by Ari. So make sure that if you think your recall will get cancelled, you never greed for the plate. Okay, just don't worry about the plate. The plate is secondary. It's been nerfed. You know, it's only 125 gold now. It's nice. It's a luxury. It's a want. You know, it's not a need. And uh, just keep your eyes on the map. You know, you're playing Cassie with Teleport. There's always going to be opportunities for flank wards. If you see one, your champion's great at coming from behind. The Miasma prevents flashes. Um, it's also easy to land your Q, right? If people are walking into you because you're already covering their escape route. So we get that nice TP off. And here we shouldn't really tax our, um, our small double. We did tax her a little bit. Uh, I think that's an important adjustment to make. You know, whenever you complete a roam, uh, just try not to take... Uh, your teammates wave if the person responsible for that lane is alive so if you gank top if the top laner is still alive just allow your top laner to farm the wave you know don't don't steal their farm just go back to mid wave because you can see there you know the extra the extra two abilities or three abilities that i cast on smolder's wave cost me an extra two or three creeps right two or three creeps extra die to that tower now there you can see i did the, the flash ult uh, just because uh, i knew that her movement was very predictable walking back to mid lane. That's actually a really big benefit of Season 14 is that fat wall there. When they do walk back from, from roaming or from warding or whatever, you can always look for a ult flash angle. Um, and as long as you follow that trick that I explained to you at the start of the video, you always land it. They won't turn away and uh, you'll get a nice little solo kill in your favor. Once again, we get the plate and see how I'm just recalling straight away. Even though, again, we could go for a few more autos and then still recall. It's pointless, guys. Any damage on the tower that doesn't guarantee you a plate is not worth your time, okay? It's not worth your tempo, right? Your tempo is the amount of free time that you have on the map, okay? And if you're spending your tempo on something that, it, that does not directly give you gold, because we don't know, you know, the plates fall off at 14 minutes. We don't know if we're going to get another another chance to smack this tower before 14 minutes. And if we don't, then that five seconds that we just spent there, you know, doing a couple extra autos without getting the plate, it's wasted. It hasn't given us any meaningful gold or any meaningful progress on the game. Uh, so make sure that once you get the plate, you just back off. All right, just, just call it quits. Uh, unless you can guarantee a, another plate, it's not worth your time. Now at this point, again, we have another blue buff, which is fantastic. Um, so we're just going to be shoving every wave and just be realistic. You know, there's no point trying to harass Ari with one pesky Q under tower. It doesn't do anything. You're not going to be able to solo kill this guy. He'll always just dash away. Uh, so when you do get a wave, you can see every single time I get a wave, I move to another lane. I get a wave, I move to the move to the jungle. I go place a ward. I look for a roam. I look for some vision. Whatever it is, um, just don't uh, try to kill your lane under tower because that is impossible on Cassio. Uh, we find Trundle here and we feel like we're stronger than him. So we do... Uh, you know, we do try and kill him. Um, our Master Yi saw this a little bit late, so he's very late to this play because he didn't see this happening, but uh, we did some fancy footwork here. Uh, we also get a level up. 
Uh, we get a little bit lucky. We're a little bit excited about the outplay. That was a nice triple kill for us. Uh, but all it comes down to is just you know looking for opportunities and uh, you know maybe five, six, seven times this game I was looking and there was nothing. I was moving after pushing a wave and I couldn't find any opportunity. But even if just once you succeed, you know one out of six roams, one out of six looks, you succeed and you find a triple kill like that, it just blows open the game. And that's why it's way more, um, way more effective to you know contribute to what your team is doing with your turns, with your um, free time after pushing a wave, rather than trying to get a solo kill in mid lane. Okay, because you can't guarantee a kill, but you can certainly guarantee that even if you don't kill Trundle there, maybe the E gets his caps, maybe the E gets the objective. We're always guaranteeing some benefit for our team uh, by being slightly less selfish um, than normal. But also, it's very hard to harass Undertale with cast Q, right? Because the ticks just keep keep refreshing. So it's you know, once you land that Q, you can never get fangs off because as soon as you walk into tower range. You start taking tower shots and it's just not particularly worth it. We see that the enemy team has lost their bot tower in general, rule of thumb. If the bot tower has gone down for your team or the enemy team, so if either team has lost the bot tower, you want to go straight straight to bot lane, straight to side lane, and you do not want to play 1v2 mid lane on Cassio because your wave clear is not that great, and most bot lanes will be able to harass you off the tower and really neutralize you in that lane. But the rest of the build is pretty simple. We just go Leandries as our second item for a bit of a HP and just rush into Death Cap and Crypto Bloom. The enemy team ended up surrendering, but I just felt like this build was really strong and wanted to share with you, and uh, let me know how you go with it in your games.